Hello everyone, welcome to Scardia.com. We are talking about the development of eye. In this section, we'll deal with the retina and optic nerve. The section has been divided into obviously to development of a retina, in which we'll see what are the various components that help in the development of retina. Then we'll talk about the development of the optic nerve, that is the components, the parts that help in the formation of the optic nerve itself. Then we'll see various clinical correlates as to what happens when the developmental process does not go as planned and we'll talk about the retinal detachment and papal edema. So let's talk about development of a retina first. So it develops from the walls of the optic cup. So this is the optic cup in blue in the figure so optic club cup is formed by the optic vesicle the optic vesicle it elongates it elongates to form optic stock and the optic cup in itself the optic cup has an outer layer which is which forms a pigment epithelium in inner layer which is the light sensitive or the neural layer of the retina we'll see how that happens so the development of retina takes place from the <coughs> optic cup there's outer thin layer which forms the pigment layer of the retina. Here in this, in this dark blue, this is the outer thin layer of the optic cup. It forms the pigment layer of the retina. And we have the inner thick layer. This layer, this is the inner thick layer. It forms a neural layer of the retina. So let's see uh, what this uh, pigment and the neural layer actually are. So rods and cones are, these are the modified neurons which are present in the uh, retina. The pigment and neural layers are separated by the intraretinal space. So there's intraretinal space between the pigment <coughs> and the um, neural layers of retina. Before birth, the space is obliterated with proliferation of the inner layer cells. So this space is obliterated by proliferation of the inner layer of cells. Now rods and cone cells, they come in contact with the pigment layer. So they come in contact with the pigment layer. So here you can see in the figure, these are the nerve fibers. This is, the, uh, this is a small cross section of the eye and uh, this is the retinal layer. And he here we can see this is the inner limiting membrane. These are the photoreceptors. And uh, this is the retinal pigment epithelium in brown. Here you can see. So these are the rod cells. Uh, here you can see the elongated cells. These are the rod cells. Then we have the cone cells. Here these cells are the cone cells, these cells. Then we have ganglion cells, bipolar cells, emocrine cells and horizontal cells. So these are various type of cells that are actually present in the retina itself. The two layers of the retina being the pigment epithelium in brown and this is the uh, neural layer of the retina in blue. Now the pigment and the neural layer of retina are initially separated by an intraretinal space which is obliterated before birth by proliferation of the cells of the inner layer. Now the rods and cones, these are the rods and co <coughs> cones, they come to lie with, in uh, close contact with the cells of the um, uh, retinal pigment epithelium. So. Moving on, we have cells of the neural layer that they pro proliferate to form uh, the photoreceptor cells, which are the ro rods and cones. So this is a rod cell and this is a cone cell. These cells are photoreceptors, which are actually responsible for detection of light and images. Now, they also form bipolar cells. So this is a bipolar cell. The bipolar cells are actually communicating cells which <coughs> communicate this photo signals to uh, and con uh, which uh, receive the photo signals from the photo cells and communicate them towards the brain. And finally, we have the ganglionic cells. Ganglionic cells are also helping the bipolar cells and both the gang ganglionic cells and the bipolar cells help in conduction of this information towards the brain. Now, let's talk about retinal detachment. What happens when a portion of retina detaches? So, as from the name, retinal detachment means separation of pigment epithelium from the neural layer of the retina is called retinal detachment. Here you can see this 
is the neural uh, the pigment epithelium separating from the neural layer of the epithelium so neural epithelium is being peeled off and this is known as the retinal detachment so it is it can be congenital and it can also be traumatic so it is an important clinical condition so moving on to the development of the optic nerve uh, the hyoid vessels they consist of uh, the hyoid artery they give rise to the artery the central artery and vein of the retina now the optic stalk it contains nerve fibers from the ganglionic cells as well so the optic stalk has some nerve fibers in its uh, in itself and th these nerve fibers they are derived from the ganglionic cells now the choroid fissure it closes at about 7 week of development with the closure of the choroid fissure the optic so stalk along with the axons of the ganglionic cell it becomes the optic nerve here you can see in the figure this is the optic nerve in yellow the thick uh, thick tube like structure is the optic nerve so optic nerve is formed by the optic stalk the optic stalk has some uh, neural elements from the ganglionic cells these nerve fibers when uh, the closure of choroid fissure takes place at about seven weeks at the same time this optic stalk is converted to the optic nerve with exons from the ganglionic cells so this is the development of the optic nerve now moving on to pupil edema so <coughs> there's increase in intracranial pressure increase in intracranial pressure causes increase in cerebrospinal fluid pressure as a result this hampers the venous return from the retina and fluid accumulates in the optic disc leading to its swelling here you can see there's swelling of the optic disc here you can see the haziness around the optic disc and this is known as the papillary edema. So the retinal vessels are covered by pia mater and they lie in the subarachnoid space that surround the optic nerve. So they do not have a lot of margin when it comes <coughs> to swelling. As a result, they cannot conduct that swelling off. The reason of this swelling is usually raised intracranial pressure papillary edema gives us an idea as to what is going on in the body it is an important diagnostic sign though not a disease in itself so this was all about this section in this section we talked about the development of the retina we saw how various layers of retina were formed and how they came to lie together then we talked about retinal detachment and papillary edema and the importance <coughs> of these two conditions I hope you understood and like this section. For further sections, keep watching scardia.com.